AI doesn't do exactly what we want it to do. We think it's hallucinating it's, and it makes it painful to use AI. You're going to be tool and AI agnostic, which means you don't care. I do not think that the government should be the ones putting the regulations on the use of AI because they are not to be trusted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Ronsley and today we're going to talk about which AI is best and when to use or not use ChatGPT. I know a lot of us are thinking that ChatGPT is the only AI and it is not. And if anyone is teaching you and if anyone has a presentation that says, I'm going to teach you AI and they only talk about ChatGPT, you can tell for sure that person doesn't know what they're talking about and unless they give you more options. In today's episode, I'm gonna show you why that's important. And here's the problem. There are so many different AIs, so many different options, and there are new ones coming out every single time. And each one of them gives you a different result. But there is a way that you can understand which one to use, when to use it, why to use it, and which use case it will best suit your need. And in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Come, let's learn. Hey, it's Ronsley. Welcome, you AI geek, to Amplify AI. Today's episode is all about which AI is best and when to use ChatGPT. Now, if you don't know, I have started to make this plan and episode 100, I covered how to prompt. If you haven't watched that, go check that out, how to prompt like a software engineer. Uh, and in the next episode, I have what are custom instructions and how you can create your own, why they're important. Uh, and in the next following three episodes, I have how to amplify your business revenue, your business brand, audience, and operations using AI. So look forward to that. Today is which AI is best and when to use ChatGPT. More importantly, other than ChatGPT, what else should I use? And of course, there are so many different options, as I mentioned at the start, and understanding which one to use and when to use it is most importantly, and which use case works for you and your business. And in the last episodes, I spoke about how processes everything, processes everything, all right? So what happens initially is that we start using AI. Everyone thinks that ChatGPT is the AI and the only AI. You remember the time when Facebook first came out or Facebook was a thing? Actually, before that, there was MySpace. But when Facebook first came out, everyone that had a Facebook account was a social media expert. Same with Bitcoin. You know, everyone was a crypto expert. And here's what's happening with AI is it's intelligent and it makes other people, including ourselves, feel intelligent. So make sure you know who you're learning from. But what happens is, okay, we've gotten to a stage where we started to use ChatGPT for everything, but then we realized that when do I actually use GPT-4 or O1 Mini? What are all these different models? And I was at an event where I had someone who was very credible get up on stage and say that ChatGPT-4 was better than 3.5. And it's not like an iPhone model. When you think about 3.5, or right now we're looking at GPT-4, different models are, are for different cases, use cases. There's different reasons to use them. And because it's 4 or it's a newer model, it doesn't mean you've got to use it for every use case. And it probably isn't good, especially right now when we have GPT, the O1 Mini, the O1 models are very different to the other models. And that's why some of the rules that we were using before don't apply, and we'll get into that. So how do we tackle this problem? The first thing is to learn and understand model size and context size, and I'm gonna get into that. The next thing is confirm your use case for your business scenario or for your situation, and then give it the context you require to give. And finally, use the creator prompt framework that I mentioned in the last episode to get the perfect results, all right? Those are your three steps. I'm gonna talk about that. Now, what happens a lot of the times when we're trying to get the best out of AI and which AI to use is we get this problem that we face. And the problem is AI doesn't do exactly what we want it to do. We think it's hallucinating. It's, and it makes it painful to use AI, so we land up going backwards. And we land up just doing the same things again or doing it ourselves. But 
if you're in the stage where you're kind of going, AI is not really working, here are some things that I'd love you to think about. The first is you've got to understand why do large language models or AI's large language models when it comes to text-based, why do they hallucinate? And how you can avoid them happening, right? So you've got to figure that out. And it's really important to understand why they hallucinate because that's probably why you're getting the results you're getting. Number two, give the right instructions to the right model to get the best response or the right response. That is something you've got to understand and you've got to realize that every model is not the same and every instruction is not the same as I covered in the last episode. And then understand the value alignment problem, which I'll explain right now. It is a computer science problem that exists and it exists in every scenario. The value alignment problem is that we cannot express entirely the vision we have in our head into words. And there's a gap in between what we see and imagine to what we communicate that imagination. So that is a value alignment problem. It happens in business when you're trying to communicate to your team exactly the vision you have in your head. That's why we have different frameworks to get the vision out so that it's easily explainable or we don't miss certain things that we think are common sense, but it's actually not common sense. So that is the value alignment problem. And that's why you get hallucinations most of the time. The hallucinations occur because there's a value alignment problem. And when you understand that, you try to bridge the gap between the value and the alignment. So. Here are some secrets for you. I'm going to get into the steps and I'm going to go deep. I'm going to show you how we can play with certain models. I'm going to show you a few models to play with and some links that you can use. So some of the secrets for you to think about when it comes to which AI is best and when to use ChatGPT or whichever is your favorite model. The first is the cost. The cost, it takes a certain amount of cost to execute an AI. So if you're using ChatGPT, for example, the monthly fee, if you are serious and you're using it in your business and by plugging in and asking OpenAI for certain intelligence, then each in time you run a prompt, you charge a certain amount of, through the API. If you're doing that, you should be doing that in your business. If you're not, talk to me about that. But cost is an important factor. So you have, you have to figure out these four important things, and it's a secret to figuring out which AI to use. The first is cost, the second is execution time, the third is use case, and the third is complexity. So what is the cost involved to execute this prompt and how much will it cost you to do it on a regular basis? Two, how long does it take to execute that prompt? Three, what is the use case and which AI will give me the best result? And four, what is the complexity of the prompt I'm trying to execute and which AI can take that complexity and use it to its advantage. So those are some of the secrets that you've got to understand. If you don't understand, follow the channel because I'll cover all that stuff. If you understand and you want to look more, just Google that kind of stuff, like look it up. You have the ability to learn things at speed today. The second secret is to learn a prompting method. It's very important because that's going to allow you to get the result that you want. And finally, maybe you can find one tool that will rule them all. Like, is there a way that you can get one tool that will have access to all the different models that you can execute which model you want? And I'm going to show you which, you know, the, I'm going to show you an option that you can use. All right. Finally, the idea here is that when you're done with this episode and when we're done with this episode, you're going to understand which AI can use, where to use, which tool, and you're going to be tool and AI agnostic, which means you don't care. You are agnostic to which AI succeeds, and it doesn't really bother you because you know which one to use and how to get the right results, the right output from different AIs. The second thing is you're going to be competent in AI models and understanding of how to get results. And the third is you're going to be able to apply artificial intelligence and automation through a variety of different business processes. So that's the aim of, the, of this episode. Let me get into this piece because I think that's important. Step number one, learn and understand model size and context size. So in, if this is the first time you have uh, been part of the Amplify AI podcast, then this is probably new information to you. 
But if you've followed all the previous episodes, you know that I've covered model size and context size before. Now, when you think about model size, it is the size of the model training data. So the whole training data that's put into the model and how much it remembers in its training data, that is the size of the model. So think of it as long-term memory. The context size is how much does it remember in short-term memory when it's executing a prompt. So when you execute the prompt and you say, can you do this for me? It has to remember something in the short term and that's the context size or the limit or the token size or the context size of its current short term memory. How much does it remember at any one time? Let me see if I can find some tables that might explain this better. So I just did a Google search and this is another way for you to look and see whether things are actually, you know, what you want them to be and whether they are stuff that matters to you. So have a look at this image. This is a really good image for you to look at because what it's done here is it's shown you the different models and it's shown you what the context window is of each one of them. Now, the context window is what I spoke about earlier when I said that it is this context size. So that's the context window that they're talking about. It's the short-term memory that I spoke about earlier. And the model size is the long-term memory is the how big is the model that you've got to download or the, how big is the model in its operational or how big is the training model. So have a look here and see how these different models have different context window. So what that means is right now, if you are executing a prompt on GPT-4.0, it remembers about 128,000 tokens in its context window. So 128,000 tokens is roughly about 100,000 words if you want to, you know, round it out. And then you see if you use GPT-4, which a lot of people have been using until very recently, it only remembers 8,000. It's the context is only 8,000. So sometimes when you're typing and you're getting to the second or third prompt, it's forgotten the context of the previous window. So understanding the context window is really important and see how Gemini 1.5 has 1 million. Now that's 2 million, by the way, and it's increased. So that's why I really like to use Claude, now Claude 3.5 Sonnet, because it has a higher context window, it remembers more. And I'm going to show you the different uh, models in, in, in a second. I hope you understood the difference between model size and context size and why context window is so important. The second is you've got to understand what is your, or, or specify what is the use case and what is the context you require for that use case. So what I mean by that is, are you just wanting to reply to an email? If you're just wanting to reply to an email, you can use any of the small platform, small models. Like you can use GPT 3.5 Turbo even to write those emails. You don't have to write them with 4.0 and all that complex stuff. And if it's not getting you the result you want, I promise you it's because you're not asking it the right way. So confirm the use case to understand what kind of context it requires. So for example, an email, it only requires the context of your voice style and of the email that you want to reply to. And then it can deduce everything from there. So it's a small amount of context and it's a small use case and it doesn't require much intelligence. On the other hand, if you're asking it to take all the inputs of your business and run a SWOT analysis, a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, then what happens in that case is you need more computing power, you need more AI, you need a bigger model, more context window, you need more information for it to remember, and then you can start to use GPT-40 or other models. And then finally, here you gotta understand how to use the Creator Prompt framework, and I'm not gonna talk, get into that because I covered it in episode 101. But the, these are the three steps, and while you remember those three steps, I'm gonna show you some of the different models that you can use. Obviously, we'll start with ChatGPT. Now, ChatGPT.com is where you go for this, and in here, I'm gonna use a temporary chat because I have a context set up in here and I wanna make sure that it's context free and it doesn't have my settings. So this settings doesn't have my personalization of ChatGPT. So up the top here, you can choose the different models and you can see there are different models here. There's GPT-4, there's 4.0 Mini, 
there is uh, GPT-4 O, and then the new ones that are come here, which is O1 Mini and O1 Preview. So let me give you some examples, right? So we have GPT-4 here, and what I love to do actually is I love to use one of my favorite prompts, which is an audience analysis. So I have a prompt list, and I, I like this Y stack one a lot. So this is one of my favorite prompts. Let's start with this, right? I, and I like this prompt for a variety of reasons. I'm going to copy it. It firstly it tells you that I want you to brainstorm my audience Y stack, which is what are my audience's pain points, fears, beliefs, values, aspirations, and, and I want to give it context. My name is Ronsley, and I run a software training and advisory company called Amplify AI that helps business owners and leaders to use AI ethically, efficiently, and effectively to grow business revenue, brand, audience, and operations. My YouTube channel specializes in showing business owners and their employees how to use AI to complete their tasks better, quicker, and easier so that they can negotiate a better work-life balance with their different businesses. All right. So while this is executing in ChatGPT, I'm going to go into Claude, and I'm going to use Claude Sonnet. Actually, I'm going to use Claude Haiku first for this exact same prompt. Okay, and I'm going to execute that, and I'm going to execute that inside Claude. Then I'm going to go into Gemini, and I'm going to execute that using Gemini Advanced, and the exact same prompt. Then I'm going to go into Grok, G-R-O-Q dot com, and I'm going to use the full chat. I'm going to choose the Llama 3B model, and I'm going to ask for the same prompt to execute, and you see how quickly this executes. Now, I'm going to get into Grok2 in a second, which is G-R-O-K, which is by Elon Musk. But let, let's just go with these three first, because I think if you have these four in particular, they're the main ones that I'd love you to look at. But let's see the difference, okay? So this is the one in GPT-4, and it's done a really good job. So understanding AI, implementation challenges, resource allocation, adaption to change work-life balance, so which is true. The biggest fear is, is being obsolete, misinvestment, making the wrong ethical steps over dependence on AI and security fears. They believe that AI is a growth lever and they do believe in the AI-human collaboration. It's the inevitability of AI as well. They do believe in long-term investment, which is totally true, right? So you see how it's really done a great job. These people are value integrity, innovation, transparency, sustainability. Uh, they, they, they aspire to be industry leaders and have operational ex excellence and have a global impact. They wish once their pain points are fixed, which is uh, understanding AI and uh, adapting to change and have a work-life balance, what they wish they could do is expand market reach, increase competitive advantage. Uh, the culture, innovation in their culture, enhance decision making and achieve scalability. They want to avoid making hasty AI adoption decisions and underestimating training. They want to do this the right way. Okay, so have a look at how that has done. Now, while that is there, I want to show you ChatGPT 4.0. Okay, so I'm going to ask it again, and I'm going to say, say new chat. So while that's happening, I'm going to make a new chat and do 4.0. And maybe there might not be a difference, but I want to see what's happening. And let's go to Claude 3.5 Sonnet and see the result. And have a look here. It's not really formatted in the best way. And now inside Claude, oh, it, it didn't do that. It didn't do that at all. It's still, for whatever reason, Claude isn't doing. It, see how it's like really refusing to do what I'm asking it, which is in the formatting, maybe the output this way might be better in terms of how, because it is separating, it knows how to separate each one of them, but in the output inside Claude, it's not doing that, which is kind of crazy. So <laughs> this is the advantage of having Claude, but again, it's the advantage of actually figuring out how to get to this point. So you see the different things I did to get there. And if you want to learn them, come join us in the school community. The school community is school.com slash Amplify AI. And join us. There's uh, 180 of us and slowly growing. So come there. 
So that's Claude, right? And then let's look at what Gemini did. Now, I just want to see the output of Claude while we're here. So see how it's time management, technology, productivity, and okay, job displacement, loss of control. It's kind of similar. They believe in the similar things. See how they kind of values may be slightly different and what they could do next, strategic focus, innovation, market expansion, talent retention. So, you know, some of this stuff is very different to what the GPT-4 put out and also suggests that the values is probably the biggest, most important part of this, while Chad GPT said that I think it was the, the, the pain points. So notice how there's slight differences, but similar. Now here in Gemini Advanced, it kind of went overwhelmed, time constraints, skill gap, that's the pain points, right? And then they have ethical dilemmas. Again, the fears are kind of very similar to what the previous other models did. So I just want to show you that something like this, it, sometimes it might not even matter which model you use. And I use different ones. So this is the only, the first advanced one that we're using. Now I went into Grok and, you know, Grok, the, the biggest advantage of Grok is how quick it is. And again, it didn't really do a great job with the formatting, but it did do it pretty quickly. Again, it, it kind of gives you similar results, right? If you're looking for which one to do, which one to look at now, there's a really good website for you to check out, which is lmarena.ai, and it'll give you the different models that are here, and you come down here onto full leaderboard, and you'll see all the different models and who it is by, and what are the, its scores. And how is it scored is there are different, there are people here that kind of put a prompt, which we'll do now, and we'll run the prompt, and it'll run the prompt on each side, and it'll be two different models. And you don't know which model it is, right? You're just trying to like compare them. So it's trying to do a blind test, see how even that's a bit different. So on model A, it's talking about decision fatigue, and model uh, B is talking about competitive pressure. It's talking about skill gaps and revenue stagnation. So here in the fears, job replacement, job security, relevance. You see how it's kind of slightly different. And then let's look at beliefs. Technology as a solution, ethical responsibility, which is the same, collaboration, which is not. Then the values, integrity, which is not on this list. Efficiency, which is on the list, work-life balance. So you see how it's different, right? Now, if I was to take a look at the results, I'd say, B is better, and it says, okay, here, see the difference, right? <laughs> so this is GPT-40, which is the May model, 13th of May, 2024, and this is a Quen 2.5 instruct model, which is obviously you've never heard of it, which means it's not as popular, and that's why there's a difference in how it shows up. But you can go into the leaderboard here and see which one and what scores best and what are the different ones available if you want to do that. And then finally, I want to show you Grok. G-R-O-K, so x.com slash G-R-O-K. It'll take you to this particular place. So I kind of went, imagine Kamala Harris endorsing AI, and given the context of Equary, it kind of broke it down. There are several lenses to look at it, like the po political one, the cultural one, and misinformation, legal. So it then took all that into consideration and said, okay, well, given that, um, this is the endorsement if she had to make one. Uh, today, we stand on the brink of a new era driven by artificial intelligence. AI isn't just the future, it's our present, shaping everything from now, from how we govern to how we connect. However, with great power comes great responsibility. I endorse the use of AI for its potential to revolutionize public service, enhance our economy, and improve lives. But we must tread carefully. The recent manipulation of images for political gain through AI technology reminds us of the need for robust regulations. And I will go on record to say that I do not think that the government should be the ones putting the regulations on the use of AI because they are not to be trusted. It doesn't matter which side it is. We must ensure AI is used ethically, transparently, and for the benefit of all, not just a few. Let's embrace AI with the eyes wide open of its challenges, committed to fairness, privacy, and truth. So then I asked to, to create an image for me, which is really interesting, and it made that image, and I said try again, and it made that image. But it's some pl someplace for you to play rock and I think you might have access to that if you are a premium member which I am but while you see all that I want to thank you for joining me hopefully this was useful 
and I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Hey, AI Geek. Thanks for listening. Your job doesn't stop here. I want you to lend your voice to the conversation. So you can join those conversations, discussions, new trainings, new recordings, and the rest of the AI Geeks by going to aigeeks.co. Also, share this podcast with a friend, another potential AI Geek. Until then, much love. 